Greetings everyone, my name is Hellswake and this is a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up VSD host for live audio compression via software. This is very useful for live streaming and recording commentary without needing expensive hardware for voice processing. Here's a quick example of how this can benefit your audio. This is a microphone test where I'm talking very quietly. This is a microphone test where I'm talking very normally. This is a microphone test where I'm talking very loudly. This is a microphone test where I'm talking really quietly. This is a microphone test where I'm talking normally. This is a microphone test where I'm talking very loudly. As you can probably tell, this is mostly useful for decreasing the dynamic range of your volume so that you can always be heard without ripping people's eardrums when you inadvertently get louder. So here we go. This is what my setup currently looks like. This is the my VST host that I have running that I'm recording everything that you're hearing so far on. But we're going to hell go ahead and set up a new one. So let's move that aside. And I'm going to post the links to all these in the description. You're going to need three different things. The VST host program. In this case, you're going to go ahead and download VST host 86 if you have a 32 bit system or VST host x64 if you have a 64 bit system. Don't, don't worry about the other ones. And that'll just give you a zip file right here. And you can just go ahead and extract that. And you just get a folder with VST host inside like that. And it runs from within this folder. You can put it wherever you want. I'm just gonna have it here on the desktop for these demonstrational purposes. And then you're gonna need the Reaper plugins this is where you get your compressor and your noise gate and all of that. You want to download the version 2.2, so you have to click on previous versions, scroll down a little bit, and right here, get 32-bit or 64-bit, depending on what you already have. And then, finally, you need this called VB Cable. Virtual Audio Cable also works, but this one is free. This is donationware. And installation is simple. For both Reaper and VB Cable, they will install automatically to your program files folder. Mine it looks like this. I got my VST plugins here with replugs in it, all the DLE, all the DLL files in it and stuff. And VB Cable is here. Once you have installed VB Cable successfully, your recording devices right here should have it listed right there. And this is what my audio is going to after I route it through the VST host. But we'll be getting to that. All right, now let's move on to how to set up VST host itself. Just run VST host and this will pop up. Click OK. It's all good. And you're just going to have these two boxes here, input and output. Does this, this is going to literally do nothing at this point. So what we first need to do is set the plugin path because if you go to file plugins, they're not here. So you need to go set plugin path under file and click the triple dot right here to browse for where you installed your Reaper plugins. By default, they're somewhere right here in the program files. VST plugins, Reaper, just click OK. When you got VST plugin selected, and it should show up right there. Click OK. File, plugins. Now you have the list of replugs. That's all the stuff you need. And now we need to set up the devices because you need to tell the program where you're getting the audio and where you're sending it to. So under devices, wave, you have your input port, which is right here, that's what's coming in, and your output port which is what's going out ultimately. So under this list, you're going to see MME devices and DS devices. Ignore the DS devices. All we want is MME. I don't know what exactly what that means, but I know that this is what we want. <laughs> so my microphone is the AT2020 USB. That's my input. Output should be your cable input. It'll say cable input, which is kind of strange, but cable, VB audio cable. I have two because I installed a secondary one, which I don't necessarily use, but it's there if you want it. 
but for this purpose you only need one if you're only doing this for your voice. And for sample rate, you need to match this with whatever your audio settings are. For example, my microphone settings, if I go to Properties Advanced, I have it set to 48,000 Hz. I want to match that. Also, VB Audio Cable Properties, make sure this is also 48,000 Hz. All of your devices should be the same sample rate. My Audacity is also set for the project rate to be 48,000 when I record. Make sure that all matches. Now the buffer size. This is how long it takes for the program to process your voice. Lower samples means it's quicker and less latency. Luckily for me, I'm able to run at the lowest setting without any quality loss whatsoever. But it might happen in your case that you're dropping data and your vocal doesn't really sound well, complete or good. So if that's the case, just increment this up and keep testing until you get the lowest one that works for you. Luckily for me, as I said, the lowest one works just fine. And there's almost no latency that's noticeable. Okay, now let's go ahead and add some plugins. In order to do this, we need to go to File, Plugins, Replugs, and first I'm going to start with Regate, which is the noise gate. It does matter which order you process your voice in. So I want to start with the gate in order to cut out all of the noise that happens in between when I'm speaking. But I'm also going to use an equalizer, which isn't strictly necessary, but it is nice to have. And most importantly is the top one here, Recomp Standalone. And you might notice that I have this weird web thing going on. That's not exactly what we want. We want it to be linear like this, where it goes from one to the next. In order to do this, we need to change the chain. To do that, we need to click on the little blue icon with the chain link on each one. Since engine is going out to the gate, I don't need to change the gate. The gate is fine. But the EQ is getting input from the engine, and I don't want that. I want it to get the input from the gate. So it passes through the gate to the EQ. So I click this little chain icon and uncheck that. And I will check mark where it says regate right there. And now it'll change. I need to do the same thing with my compressor. I don't want that to get from the, from the engine input. I want it to get it now from the equalizer like that. And finally, the output is getting it from three different spots at once, and that's not good. We want it to solely get it from the compressor. Boom. Now, that is what we want. That is a chain. Okay, now this is when you would want to change the settings for each of your plugins. To do that, you click the little green one here that has a little dial on it and that will bring up the settings for each one. That's all of them at once if you want to see that, but just do it one at a time. I'm not going to go ahead and explain what a noise gate does or equalizer does or a compressor does, but here are my settings that I use over here in this notepad. If you want to use them as a starting point, just keep in mind that everybody's setup is different. It's going to depend on your microphone, how your computer processes your audio, like your sound card and whatnot, and your voice itself. Just find out what works best for you. This is what works best for me at the moment. I'm always tweaking and changing it, but this is right now what I'm using. And now, finally, it, I'm not going to set those right now because I don't need to. But in your case, you're probably going to want to save this. In order to do that, first you need to make sure that Auto Save Plugin Banks is checkmarked. So do performance, auto save plugin banks, click that. Now it's checkmarked. If that is not checkmarked, every time you close VST host, you will lose any settings that are in these plugins. And that's not good. So now to actually save this performance, save as, and I could just name this like AT2020 live or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just so you know what it is, but I didn't quite save it yet. You still have to go performance, save. And now it's right there, AT2020 Live. Anytime you make changes to any of the settings, 
just do performance save and it'll save your changes. And now one little final thing that you should be aware of when using VST host is that every time you close this program, I'm going to go ahead and close it now. You can reopen it and it will automatically open the first slot right here. But the thing is, if you notice, there's a little bar that normally goes up and down as I'm speaking and right now it's not working. And that's because when you open VST host, you have to reinitialize the devices. If you're only using this for this single instance of microphone processing, go ahead and just do devices, wave, and hit OK. And now, there we go. Now the little bars are working and responding to me talking into my microphone. It is possible to use VST host in multiple instances, perhaps to also process your game audio if you so choose to compress that for whatever reason. I personally do, don't use it that way, but it is possible. And you have to be aware that these little input and output ports will change around because you're switching back and forth and changing, having different inputs and outputs for each of those instances. You're going you're to have to make sure that you select the right one for that instance each time that you reinitialize the devices. And one final note, while there is no noticeable latency at first, it can build up to a noticeable level after several hours of this running but that's easily fixable by just doing this exact same thing that I just did. Devices, wave, okay. And then the latency will go away. Personally, I just do that every two hours while live streaming and I have no problems whatsoever, but I have also live streamed for five or six hours at a time with forgetting to do that and it didn't really make a difference and wasn't even that noticeable in the long run. So that's that. All right, and that pretty much wraps it up. I hope that that helps you at least get started in using a VST host to compress your voice for live streaming or recording purposes. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody, and have a good one.